All right, guys, let me walk you through how to get your um, storyline presentation up on the internet so that your clients will be able to see it. It is a little bit of a complicated process, and um, hopefully you guys will have no problems with it. So I've got the first part of the video already up, and that will show you how to sign up on um, Amazon Web Services so that you can get the web space to be able to put your files up on. This video is going to show you how to walk through and actually get them on. Um, it is, like I said, a little bit of a complicated process, so I'm hoping between some help guides and some uh, what I'm about to show you, you should be good to go um, with getting this done. So I'm going to pull this up. This link is going to be in the class too, so if you guys want to go ahead and look at it, this is the instructions from Amazon that I followed. Like I said, it's not the most straightforward thing. One piece in here that is really important that you guys will want to come down and get is when you get to this part, you're going to need to do some copying and pasting of this code right here. So um, I'm going to leave this over on the side. I'm going to move it to the side, but you'll see where you need that. So uh, make sure you have that website kind of pulled up on the side too. But again, it gives you kind of step-by-step -step walkthroughs. Just you kind of got to know a little bit of what's happening on it. All right, so here we are at Amazon Web Services. We're going to go ahead and log back in. Um, again, hopefully you guys have created your accounts and everything. I'm going to go ahead and use a root user because I want to be at the top of the thing. We're going to use our thing that we signed up with. And it should take us to our login page. Now, I've already gone ahead. You may not have this stuff up here, but when I was testing around, that's why it's there. Um, honestly, I think you can just search for S3 up here. And right here is your Amazon storage for free. So if you just click that, it should take you to a login screen. Now, you guys won't have this Ben Dolls one here. This is the one I was playing with for something that we had in a previous semester. But you guys should have something that kind of looks similar to this where it says buckets in here. Now the way to think of buckets on this for our purposes is any training that you built will be in its own separate bucket. So make sure you name that appropriately as you guys go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a bucket. The template or the uh, example I've been using is one for a church. So I'm going to call this first uh, Bible and I do underlines instead of spaces because sometimes on a web thing it kind of messes that up. I don't think it will here, but we're just going to go ahead and make sure. So I'm using underlines. So we're doing first Bible, children, training. And we'll go with that for now. And that should be enough that I can tell what's going on with it. Okay. Um, so that's going to be our general configuration. Let me scroll down. I'm going to unblock this. So right now when you build a bucket, it's completely private. Nobody on the web can find it. But that's going to be a problem because our client will be on the web and they're going to need to go find it. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and unclick all of that. And when it does, it says, are you sure you want this to have public access? For right now, I'm going to say yes. And then again, when your client, everything's done at the end, you're going to give them the files and you delete this off of here anyways because they're going to go put it up on their own web server, web space somewhere else. Okay, so for right now, all we're doing is making sure that the client can get in here to see stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave the defaults here. I'm going to leave the defaults, leave the defaults, and I'm going to come down and hit create bucket. All right, and let's see. Let's not contain. All right, so it won't let me do the brackets. So we are going to take those out, and we'll just go with it all as one word, which will be a lot harder to read in the future. So hopefully you don't have a million of them going for First Bible. All right, create the bucket. And so here we go, First Bible Children's Training is right there, okay? All right, so that's for the first step. We've got our bucket or our training site built now. Now we need to go and put the materials in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and um, click on First Bible Training. And I have already gone into Storyline and published out my files. So let me go ahead and show you those. All right. So this is what your file structure will look like. Don't worry about not knowing what half of that stuff means. That's okay. The only one you're going to need to know is that this is called story.html, and we'll see that why here in a second. Also, you won't have this scans thing. That's something else that's just on my thumb drive, but your file structure should look something like this because Storyline names everything the same um, when it comes out. That's why it's important to name your folders correctly um, because it jams it in the folder and then has all this extra stuff in here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide this to the side so you can see it. I'm going to select all of this and then I'm going to turn off my scans because again that's not part of storyline. I'm going to click and drag and drag it into the middle here into the Amazon web files. Okay, and You can see here like this one has 110 depending on how big your lesson is. This one's just the prototype so it's smaller. 
but depending on how big your lesson is, you will probably have, I think the one I tried yesterday had about 1,500 files. That's fine. Remember, Amazon is just looking at the space, so as long as you stay under 5 gigabytes, which unless you embedded videos, which don't embed videos, um, you should be able to stay under the 5 gigabytes with no problem on multiple of these. Alright, so I'm going to scroll down, just kind of look at it, everything looks fine. I'm scrolling all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and hit upload. And you'll see here, it starts chugging along, going pretty quick on this, depending again how big the file is, it will take a little bit longer. I think mine yesterday, that was a thousand files, took probably about five minutes on high speed, so just realize it could take a little bit of time. But you're just going to kind of sit there and wait on that. While that does that, I'm going to scroll on down to the next set of instructions. And come on there. 90, we should be about done. Okay. So our files are now on the web, but we don't have access where people can go see them. We've got some of it built. We've got to go and do a couple extra steps here. Okay. So everything looks good. We're at 100%. Um, it doesn't look like we had any files that didn't make it up. So hopefully everything's looking good. I'm not going to go through all that. It looks like it worked. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit exit. And here you can see it looks again like what we had. So we have our folder here. We have our folder here. If I pull that other thing up, you can see it's matching pretty close to what we pulled over. So we had three folders and a bunch of files. There's one folder, two folders, three. So everything looks like it came over. We should be good to go there. Okay. All right. So our files are up there. Let's go ahead and start making this public access. All right. So if I come up here to property, so again, I'm still in my first Bible children training bucket. If I come up to properties and I click it, I need to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And right here where it says static website hosting, I need to edit that. And I'm going to enable it. And that means it's going to make it a live website. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just have this static host website right there. I'm going to scroll down and here is where we need to name some things. Now I don't have an error page, so I'm just going to do what they said. And honestly, if somebody goes to it and it breaks, it's just going to pop up something that tells them, hey, you can't make it here. Now this one, instead of index.html, what the index is means whenever they hit the website, that's the first page they're going to see. It's the entry page. Most websites call it index.html. For some reason, Storyline doesn't do that. It calls it story.html. So you can see it right here. That's what we needed this story.html for. Okay. So I'm going to move that back out of the way. And I'm going to, instead of index.html like it wants me to do right here, I'm going to type in story, if I can spell it right, dot .html. Okay? All right. Now, this is, if I go in here and I hit save, ideally you would have a public website, but you're not. And I don't know why this is. It's just something that's here. Let me pull back over the instructions. And this is where I was saying you're going to need that copy and paste code. Okay? So I'm going to scroll on down. Where was it? Right here. Okay. You need to grab this. I'm going to copy it. And let me move this out of the way again. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay. And now it gives you another heads up down here. Right underneath. Uh, where did that stuff go? It says right here, I have to replace example.com with my bucket name. Okay. And when you do this, you have to see see how it has it in red here, the example.com, and it has this slash star. You have to leave that slash star. And what it's saying is everything that is under this name, whatever this thing is, any file, so all 100 of those files I just put on, that needs to have open access. And that's what that little slash star means. That's why you've got to have that little slash star there, otherwise it's going to throw up an error. Okay? So I haven't changed anything. If I hit save changes here, You'll see it gives me a little red air. It says, hey, I can't do it. All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change example.com to, let me go back up. Here's my bucket name right here. First Bible, child training, children training. Make sure I get everything, including that F. I'm trying to highlight it. I'm going to copy that. So I've got that text. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to replace this example.com with first Bible training and I'm leaving that slash. Now look, if I take the slash star out and I hit save, it still leaves me that error. It's not letting me go. Okay. Now if I come back in and I put this slash star back, 
that's where it will finally give me, hopefully if it works, the ability to move forward. It's still not. So give me one second. Let me go and see what's going on. Actually, I, I had this yesterday too. So I'm going to cheat it. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to go to my Amazon, uh, my first Bible, and I'm going to open it in a new tab. All right, so that's pulling up. If I go over to properties, I probably have fat fingers somewhere. This is what I'm going to copy right here. I'm going to copy that. Let's come back over to this. Scroll on down, and I'm going to replace this little thing in here just to make sure everything's looking right. I'm going to paste it, slash, star, and please work with me this time. All right, let me go ahead and pause it, see what's going on with the air. I told you this one's a little bit more complicated than most, so let me see what I can figure out on this. All right, so like I said, it's the easiest process ever, and even Dr. Gale won't make any mistakes on it, but I did because I didn't read the instructions. So realize this says redirection rules optional, and remember up here we set this as a host static website. I didn't read the instructions, so I'm pasting this in the completely wrong space. So I'm going to highlight all this because I still need it, but we got to go put it somewhere else. I'm going to uh, copy it, and then I'll delete it out of here. So I still have my story.html. We still have it as a static web page. We just took like a five-minute detour. If I hit Save Changes now, it works. Okay? So um, we got our little green note saying that everything is good. If I scroll all the way down at the bottom, you'll see right here we've got some more information going. All right, now to get people to the access site. So right here is the actual website. But if I click it, you'll see I've got this crazy code going in here. All right, we've got to fix that. So what you do is you go up, and this is, again, step four down here, where we copy and pasted this code. All right, so we're still playing around with this piece. So what we do is we scroll up, and instead of going on to properties and pasting that, we're going to go to permissions, because that little error code said people don't have permissions. It's forbidden to get in there. So on this one, make sure all of this is off, and if we set that up originally with it off, it should still be off. If not, hit edit and turn this off. But as long as those say off, you scroll down and we're looking for this bucket policy. All right. And to its credit, like I said, this thing did actually say go to buckets and go to permissions. I didn't read the instructions on that, but now it's going to work and everything will be fine. So I'm going to paste that code in here. I'm going to hit edit, paste. Notice again, I still have my first Bible training slash star. So we're good to go there. And if everything works right, I should be able to hit save changes. If this doesn't work, you probably took the slash star out or you didn't change the name to the first. This is where that error would also pop up. So let me go ahead and like show you. If I take this out and I hit save changes, it gives me an error again down there. Okay. So what we had talked about earlier, that error code right there actually means what I had said earlier. You got to have the slash star and you got to have your, your little bucket name here. So now I'm going to hit save changes. And we get the green message up at the top that says everything's working and everything looks good. All right, so now ideally, we've got our files in there. We've set our permissions. Everything should look nice. I'm going to go back to properties. And down at the bottom where it was set up the website. Now if I click that, boom. We've got our training and it is accessible on the internet. So now I can come back over. I can copy this. You can click this little thing to copy it or you can try and highlight it and copy it. But I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and then I would go into my email, and I'll use this thing here. I would go into my email, send that off to the client, and they should be able to walk through the training. Okay. So again, very convoluted process. I think Amazon Web Services, with all their knowledge and money, could make that a lot easier, but it is doable, and that's how you can get it where they can actually go on and see what it would look like on their website um, when they're done with it. So again, at that point, the training is completely everything you built in storyline and it all works and everything's flowing okay so with that being said if you guys have any questions on it let me know but again hopefully between the instructions that are posted in there plus the video outside of that little five minute detour we had you guys should be able to walk through um, and this is something you'll need to keep in your you know back pocket keep on your uh, flash drive or whatever you will probably need to in the future have something like this where you can easily go and show them online 
uh, the progress you're making and again the Amazon web services or the Google services all of those are somewhat free um, for you to be able to just kind of get the testing back and forth um, you can't send the storyline file to your clients because most of them won't have storylines so they won't be able to open the file and it's very dangerous to send the zip file because a lot of times it'll get blocked um, by uh, email filters because zip files usually have viruses in them so they don't let them through so this is an easy way to make sure that your client well an easy quote unquote way to make sure that your client can actually get to that file that you're trying to show them so again sorry this video took so long but hopefully that will walk you through it if you have any questions on it just let me know all right thanks